Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Fury. My name is Nicholas Spirio, and in this part of the Sonos speaker visualization, product visualization, I'm going to be looking at a little bit more of the modeling part of this model. Um, we Last time we did the rough shaping of pretty much all of the model. So now we wanna create a um, some of the chamfer edges to avoid this issue from earlier where everything just kind of gets rounded. We want to do a, a chamfers on certain edges to tell the turbo, modus, uh, turbo smooth modifier to not um, soften up those edges. So we kind of need to create control edges. There's a lot of ways we can do this um, and I cho I've chosen to do it by using chamfer. So we need to figure out which of all of these edges needs to be um, hard edges and which doesn't. So this edge, for example, is a very sharp angle. So right now with the turbo smooth modifier, um, it just gets rounded a lot because it, it subdivides between the distance of the edges. So the closer two edges are to each other, two or more edges are to each other, the sharper an edge it'll be. So. I'll uh, select this um, edge loop right here by double clicking on the edge. I'll go to chamfer settings and then adjust accordingly. So I'll just keep it on a segment of one, um, but do something like maybe 0 0.03, something like that. If I do that and I check my turbo smooth modifier now, we can see that I get this really nice sharp edge all the way around. That's exactly what we want. So now that we have one edge fixed, we can start fixing the rest of them. So these two edges needs to be sharp as well. We can see that oh, yeah. we can see that if we go to um, that. we were able to see like here, we have a very sharp edge right there. Um, so I'll chamfer these two, maybe make it even a little bit smaller, something like that. And same goes with the edges we have down here. Uh, all of these three, I want to get the loop of those. So I can just press loop over here, or I can press Alt L on the uh, keyboard. Um, but that's a pretty far distance for my left hand to do on the keyboard. So I'll just you know, press it over here. I could double click on this, hold down control and double click on the rest as well. Uh, and that'll do the same for me. Go to chamfer settings. I'm okay with that amount. Same goes with this bottom part here, but I can't, I can't actually select this loop. If I double click on it, nothing really happens. If I do it on this, only these two get selected. And that's because of how the um, edges are, or, or the polygons are around here. If I, for some, took these and went into scale, hold down shift to scale them inwards to create the inset, I can now actually select these and do a chamfer. Say okay to that, go up here, press a four and go to the turbo smooth modifier and increase that a little bit, maybe an iteration of three. And this will kind of create exactly what we wanted, right? So now we need to fix this top part. On the top part, we have this edge here. So this edge needs to go all the way around. You can see I can select, if I double click on this, it'll select all the way around until the part where we did here. So I can manually select these last few bits and do a chamfer on that part which needs to be very little, make it 0 0.03 maybe. And then we need to chamfer the inner part. And this has the exact same, same issue as the bottom part of the object has. Um, so I need to, in this case, I'll just manually select all the way around. Um, it'll only take a few seconds, so it's not too bad. But most of the cases we wanna try and figure out how we can do selections and so on with as few clicks as possible just so that we don't waste our time too much. So when we have all the edges around um, selected, we can go into our chamfer settings and then maybe increase the chamfer a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit more than before, mostly because we have this sort of, it rounds a little bit, so it's not as sharp in the bottom. So I'll go to maybe 0.1, say okay to that, and check our turbo smooth 
turn it on and see that, you know, this looks kind of nice. So this part, however, is not right. It needs to be a bit, you know, this part needs to be more straight. The corners here needs to be rounded, but they're rounded way too much. So we kind of want to try and see if we can fix that. And we can do that by creating a few more edges instead of, because we already have like um, chamfer edges here. We could in theory take this and do chamfers on the corners here, but that'll create a bit of a mess and some problems here on the mesh as well. So what I'll do instead is I'll take advantage of this not being a, um, a quad yet. Uh, so I can take this side and take a ring select, press connect, move this closer to up here. And if I press here on show end result, it'll it'll show my entire modifier stack while I'm in the edible poly. So it'll show how it looks with the turbo smooth and I can press F4 and you can see that as soon as I move this edge, this will straighten up the corners a lot more. So something around this looks a lot better than before. I can take off my show end result and press F4. But this is now a even more <laughs> not quad uh, polygon. So to fix that, I can custom cut. So just going to cut. Uh, default hotkey is Alt C. I can press from this vertex to this, and this is now a quad. This still isn't, but, and the same goes for the other side, of course. Um, just cut from this vertex to here. We still haven't fixed this lower part. You see, it gets kind of, you know, stretched a little bit too much to the side compared to here. We need to keep this more straight. So we can do the exact same thing, but down here, we can do a ring select and then connect and then move this edge down here. And then I can cut from here to here and from here to here. This will make sure that this is a quad. This is actually also a quad now. So it should you know, behave a lot better. And you can see that we now have this result, which is pretty cool. All right, so to keep this easy, um, I will create the button, uh, the buttons uh, for the speaker. I will create them on their own. I can just do a small box from the top view. So if I, Press a free, I can look through the model uh, with my, um, as a um, wireframe. Um, I'll create a box roughly in this shape. I'll make sure on the modify here that it's the same length and width. So 1.3, 1.3, that's probably the rough size I need. And a height of just one. It doesn't really matter how much it is because I kind of want to move this up here so that I can modify the button to look exactly how I want it to. Convert it to an edible poly. And because we centered our object in the beginning, we can actually take this button, we can rename it button, uh, maybe button small. And we can reset it on the Y axis and the X axis so that it'll be centered on this thing as we had before. When it's an edible poly, I can select the button polygon, bottom polygon, and I can move the top a little bit so it gets roughly the height I want. I deleted the button because the bottom part of it, because I just want to intersect it with the model. In theory, I kind of needed to do a, um, a hole here. <laughs> for the button as well, but you know, it's almost not visible and I don't really think for this model it's worth it. So, you know, we can we can save that for a different tutorial later on on how to actually do that. So, I'll just go ahead and uh, I reset my UI recently, so I need to change this a little bit. Assign random colors, okay. And then we have it like this. So, now we actually just need to, because we deleted the bottom uh, polygon, we just need to fix the corners and the top part a little bit. So I can rinse select the corners, chamfer it to a an amount, maybe something like this. Um, take the top part and I can actually um, insert it just a little bit. Take this ring selection here or the um, edge loop here 
and chamfer this part as well, just by a small amount, a very small amount, something like this. And this will kind of, you know, keep this edge um, a lot sharper than the rest of it. And instead of giving its own turbo smooth and keeping it separate like this, um, I can actually fix that by uh, going to the, the speaker itself, going to edible poly and press attach and attach the button right here. So now it's part of the same object, but they're not welded together. They're, it's a separate element. So if I press Z, uh, Z, sorry, on the keyboard, um, I can focus on whatever I have selected. So if I select this part uh, with elements, I press, uh, press Z on the keyboard and it'll actually focus in on that. Now, because this isn't um, a quad, it'll look pretty messed up if uh, with our uh, turbo smooth. So we can, if we want to uh, connect these corners with each other, and make sure that everything is actually indeed a quad. And this should you know, already look a lot better than it did before. Same goes with the big button. So to do that, I can just hold down, I can select the element of the small one, hold down control and shift and move it to maybe roughly here. Press OK to clone it to element. So control shift and then just drag it with move. And I can take the vertices of this. Um, if we go to top view, press a free to look through, make sure that we don't select any vertices of the speaker itself and drag this maybe to something roughly like this and a little bit down. And as soon as we check it with the turbo smooth, we need to move it a little bit up. That's fine. Something like that. So that seems to align pretty well for what, what was intended. And now we actually have most of it modeled. There's this small LED area here. We could either model it straight into this thing as well, just like, you know, it is actually a small dent here. Um, but in this case, since I'm keeping this tutorial a little bit more simple, I won't be doing that. I'll be, we could texture it or we could just create a small object, which is probably a lot easier. Um, so I'll just make a copy of, whoops, make a copy of our button, the small one, scale it down to something like this, do a um, connect so that we can actually, and maybe do the same here. Then there's a freeze, look through it, scale it outwards. Oh, we can't do that. All right, we'll create that separately um, afterwards. But that's fine. Um, we can always, you know, texture it or whatever we wanted to. There's a lot of uh, ways we can actually fix that part or just create it out of a new box, which makes it a lot easier to get the rounded corners. Um, I kind of forgot the corners that were already chamfered here, so that doesn't really work. Anyway, we're um, out of time for this one, uh, for this tutorial as well. So I'll end it here. And if there's uh, something you want me to try and go a little bit more in depth into, please comment down below. Um, if you want some more tips on how to actually model, please visit uh, guys like um, Arimus 3 d on uh, YouTube, here on YouTube. I'll put a link to his uh, channel on the description so you can check his stuff out. He's really cool at modeling stuff. So I would really recommend you going and watching some of his tips. There's a bunch of them over there, um, which is way more than I can ever create at least for the next year. Um, so yeah, check him out as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye.